Good morning, Pastor. Minister Janelle Gale, sisters and brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. May I take this opportunity to welcome you all here in the sanctuary of St. Mark's United Methodist Church. It is wonderful, as always, to see all the family all the familiar faces of our friends and members of St. Mark's. I know that you all join me this morning in extending a heartfelt and sincere welcome to all our new members and all our visitors who may be joining us today via telephone, Facebook, or YouTube. As we celebrate Holy Communion, let us remember the true meaning of this sacrament. We trust the message today will uplift and encourage you as we share together in fellowship. Let us prepare our hearts for the message. 
Be smart and get yourself the bread of life. From our pastor, Pastor Kosiko. Our opening prayer will be given by Sister Marna Wolfock, followed by the scriptures reading done by Sisters Sharon Smith and Lavorne Brathe, respectively. Thereafter, Minister Gale will bless the offering, birthdays, and anniversaries. Let us continue to pray for our sick, children, as well as those in mourning at this time. Let us all stand for the opening hymn. Guide me, O do thou Jehovah. Found in hymnal number 127. Let us stand for the opening hymn. glad in it. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, to give you praise and adoration for all the blessings we have received from you. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning to see a new day, the beginning of a new month. Father, we thank you and we praise your holy name. Oh God, as we come, we realize that we have a responsibility to praise your name and to worship you. You have been so good to us, oh God, and we come with grateful hearts, knowing that you deserve all praise, even at this moment. And as we come, oh God, we realize that we have sinned against you. We have not done the things you want us to do. We have not been kind to our neighbors. Lord, we ask you now to forgive us 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask you, oh God, that you will continue to lead your people. Draw us closer to you day by day and help us to live the life that you would have us live. Gracious God, we remember those who are in mourning this morning. We pray, God, that you will just enfold them with your loving arms. Help them to know, God, that you are with them and you promise that you'll never leave them, neither forsake them. So bring the comfort that they need at this time. Remember those who are sick, those who are sad and lonely, those who live by themselves, those who have no one to care for them. Gracious God, we ask you now to reach out and touch. Lord, we look to you, for you are our only hope. We look to you, God, for you are our defender. We look to you, God, for you are the only one who can carry us through this journey that we call life. Go before us, dear God, and lead the way. Direct our path and help us to know, Lord, that if we only put our hands in yours, all will be well. And so this morning, God, we just want to praise you. We want to adore you. We want to thank you, God, at this moment for those who are celebrating. Even now, oh God, as Jamaica celebrates another independence, we ask you, oh God, that you will remember the people. We pray, God, that they will come to realize that you are God and God alone. And if they only look to you, Father God, all will be well. Gracious God, hear our prayers today. We ask you for journeying mercies for those who will be traveling during the course of this holiday. We ask that you will go before, oh God, direct their path. We pray, God, that you will watch over them. No harm or danger will come near to them, and they will be back with us. Gracious God, hear our prayers. And as we look to you this morning for a message from our pastor, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will just cover him with the blood of the Lamb. We pray, God, that every word that comes out of his mouth will come from you. We pray, God, that you will continue to strengthen him and to bless him. Bless his family, O oh God, and help them to know, Lord, that you are with them, that you promise that you'll never leave them, neither forsake them. Bless all who gather here this morning. Bless every individual. We ask all of these blessings in the precious name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our scripture reading will be taken from Exodus 16, reading from verse 9 through 15. of the Israelites complained against Moses and Haran in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, 
draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites. They looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the lay of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Here hence the reading. Thanks be to God. Church, the reading is taken from John 6, 24 to 35, and it reads, So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus or his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you eat your fill of the loaves. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in whom, whom he sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What works are you performing? Our ancestors eat the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which come down from heaven and give life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whosoever come to me will never hungry, and whosoever believe in me will never be thirsty. Here is the gospel. As we recognize those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this month, we give you thanks, O oh God, for your hand of grace and mercy in their lives. 
We ask that you would continue to strengthen them, to guide them, and walk with them every step of the way, that they would continue to recognize you and your awesome presence in their lives, giving you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And as we bless our offering, almighty giver of all good gifts, grow us in the wisdom to know what it is to have only because you have given it to us first. Remind us that you have called us in Christ to be gentle, patient, and loving, and at one with your children everywhere. May the gifts that we have given to you, O oh God, be gifts that reflect the depth of our gratitude for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, hear these words of invitation to the Lord's table. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have in we have not done your will, we have broken your law, 
We have rebelled against love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not loved the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and the resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, 
as our Savior Christ has taught us the, the prayer that we just said, and we are not going to repeat it, and let us just uh, continue to celebrate the joy of knowing that we are people of, of God. Amen? So we're going to skip the, the, the Lord's Prayer because we heard that earlier. You can move on. And so, beloved, I believe that you are ready with your bread in your hands. Are we ready? We are going to share at the same time. So take your time to uh, get ready with your bread in your hand. The blood of Christ which is given to us for the redemption of our sins. Let us take and eat together. Amen. Are you ready for your cups? My friends, the blood of Christ which is given for us on that cross to wash away all of our sins, not just some, the big ones, the medium-sized ones, and the small and the extra small sins, all of them, those we have committed in the past at any particular age, and those we are living on right now, and the sins we are yet to commit, all of them have been washed away by the blood of Christ. Therefore, take the blood of Christ and drink. And now that we have been invited to the table of the Lord, we shared, we ate, and we shared a drink, and we are a new creation. We have been re-anointed, reselected, and reset aside, all of us, as Christ's people. Let's continue to give God all honor and glory and praise for the ways in which God saves our lives and forgives our sins. And let us continue to make the permanent commitment to serve God and to minister to the people. Invite somebody else to church. Tell someone else on your conversations about Christ. Amen? Amen. Thank you. And now uh, we will invite the music ministry today that is brought to us by none other than our own, our famous soloist, Brother Elliot Wright. Can you put your hands together as he comes? Brother Trevor Elliot, rather. Brother Trevor Elliot. Amen. Amen.
about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand, but I know who was tomorrow. And changing sports today. I'm going to be down here. God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Is this the day that the Lord has made or what? Can somebody put their hands together for Jesus Christ on this day? Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. It's so good to see all of you in the house of the Lord. You know, we cannot take God for granted. Amen? If you made it, don't just say, I made it. Say, by the grace of God, I made it. Did the grace of God wake us up this morning feeling alive and vibrant and capable to be in the house of God? God is good. And all the time, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Amen. I have a worshiping spirit this day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you know, uh, uh, I, I will really miss you as I go on my vacation this entire month of August. I will miss you, and that's why I am down here today to be close to you. I just want to enjoy you as much as I can because I will miss you while I am away. Now, we, we do have a message uh, that God has placed in my heart, uh, uh, and, and I, will, I will ask us to, uh, to bow to God in prayer and ask God to give us his message. I am a moving target. I know that's going to be uh, 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 a permanent job for the tech team. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for every day in our lives. Thank you for bringing us to church. And thank you for prompting us for your word. Thank you for the gift that is more precious than every other gift. The gift of the word of God. Thank you, Jesus, for being there for us all the time. And thank you for anointing my tongue and my voice today to be your messenger to your holy people. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. The word of God today talks about being smart. You know, I have a, a, a one smartest person in my family is, 
is always the youngest. Do you have anyone who is the youngest child in your family? That is your smartest superstar in the family. Um, I, I used to hear that the, 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 the fourth graders are the smartest, and then I heard the first graders are the smartest, and then I heard the pre-Ks, and the third graders, the sixth graders, the seventh grader, you know, everybody is smart. We are all smart, and we all love to be told that we are smart people. Now, today, though, on today's message, uh, Brother Elliot, there is a redefinition of who is smart. The Bible today is teaching us about who is really smart. Whoa, I thought I was smart. I always thought of myself <laughs> as a smart human being. But now I am told today that there is something else about being smart. No one is smart unless they have a bread of life for themselves. Wow, that is, that is different. That is, that is strange. That is, uh, that is something else, isn't it? I am not smart until or unless I have the bread of life. Oh, wow. The bread of life. It reminds me of this woman. We are not told of her name, but they are saying that she went to a well to fetch some water. She did not go on a regular time, which is usually early morning before the sun uh, brings the, the, the highest heat of the day, like the other women used to do. She went on the middle of the day when it's hot. The heat is there. She had her own reasons now. You see people doing whatever they're doing, you may not understand. I may not understand. People have their own reasons for being who they are, for doing what they do. Watch out. Don't judge them. Let only one person judge everybody. Who is that? Let God be the judge. The woman had her reason. She went to fetch the water, not with the crowd of the other women early in the morning when it's not too hot. But she went. When it was too hot enough, the other women would stay home and wait. If they did not fetch water in the morning, they would go in the evening. At the dawn of the sun, that's where they would go. Or early in the morning, before the sun rise. She went right at the middle of the day. And guess what happened to her? She met Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in that day. And she had a conversation with him. She did not really know who he was. And, and you know, and she, 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 she brought herself into the conversation and all of that. But along the way, Jesus helped her, ushered her graciously, patiently. Jesus knew the issues that the woman was dealing with. Jesus did not want to be harsh to someone who's already tender hard, someone who has already been beaten down by life, being played like a basketball from a man to man, trying to find love, trying to find a normal living condition. She found Jesus in the world. She was going to fetch water. And an, along the conversation, Jesus revealed to her that, you know, I really am the one who have what you are looking for. Actually, I have water of life. The water that if you would get that water, you would not need to come here in the middle of the sun, hot, sweating, and carrying pounds and pounds in your head of liquid cold water going home. I have water of life for you. And the woman said, give me that water. I don't want to wait. Just, just, just give that water to me right now. Because you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what people are talking about me. You don't know my reasons why I'm here this hour by myself fetching water. That might be the, exactly the thing I want, to get water that will prevent me from keep coming here in the middle of the day, burning. My feet are burning. And my, my body is, 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 is just, just sweating with hotness. 
The woman did not realize really what she was asking the Lord for. The Lord was talking about himself. Jesus Christ myself is the water of life. Have you gotten the water of life? And today, when we look from the, uh, the, the book of Exodus, that's the Old Testament scripture, chapter 16, we find a story about bread. Then we look on chapter 6 of the gospel according to John. We find another story. It's also about bread. <laughs> you know, we are hungry people. We are bread people. We are food people. The language bread, by the way, it does not mean literally the bread that we call in English language bread. It really represents and signifies and speaks for anything you eat. It's just food. If you want, you can put food in there. We are people of food. And boy, I love food. Yesterday, we went to Donny Park. We wanted our uh, little, uh, little daughter to have some fun during the, uh, the school break. And, 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 and you know, they don't allow you to bring your food and water and everything in there because they want you to buy and, 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 and promote their businesses inside. They're extremely expensive. Uh, but but that's, you know, that, that's, that's how it works. So we went in there, and then uh, we, we bought some lunch and what have you. And then on our way back, almost everybody's complaining of their tummy. Oh, my, my stomach, oh, my stomach. <laughs> you see, sometimes the food gives us the diseases that we are lingering with. As a result, my wife and my daughter are not in church this morning because we, we just want to make sure that uh, uh, everyone is okay. <laughs> You see, we are people of food, my friends. We can't help it. We are going to church. We've got to eat something or drink something. I love ginger tea. I was, and somebody, a good friend of mine, brought me some ginger tea this morning to my office. And so I was just enjoying ginger tea with my friend, Minister Janelle Gale, this morning. We are people of food and water and drink. They say that our bodies is filled with water. There is a large quantity of water running throughout our bodies that give us life. We are recommended minimum quantities of food that we must eat in order to function. We are people of food. The woman was going for water. And the people are telling Jesus on the book of Exodus chapter 16, they really thought they were talking to, to Moses, you know. They didn't know they were talking to God. All those complaints, why didn't this God kill us right there in Egypt? We would have had bread there, enough meat to eat. Now we are dying here. We are starving to death. You told us that this God of yours have sent you to liberate us, to free us from the slavery of Egypt. You told us that you're going to take us to the promised land where manna and honey and everything is there. A better life. You told us that you are God. If we believe and follow you, you are God is going to bless us. But look, now we are in the wilderness and we are starving ourselves to death. We have minors, we have children here. We have the elderly here. We have people with disability. We have people on medication who have to eat in a particular time. Where is your God? So now God is reshaped on the basis of food. People are rearranging the image and the capacity and the power of God based on what goes on the tummy. And I'm telling you, I was driving back from Donny Park. Uh, that's Pennsylvania. Is that Pennsylvania, right? That's Pennsylvania, y'all. <laughs> you know, it's more, a, little, a little more than two hours. And, and somebody is complaining of their tummy because of food. And we are redefining God on the basis of food. And so God, again, did not go harshly on his people. He understands. God always understands our human need. And God provides them with man. And now they are confronting Jesus on the book of John, chapter 6. The same crowd of people, same generation, same offspring of Abraham. The same people of faith on the highest God that there is. They are confronting God again through Jesus. 
based on the same reasons. Jesus had done a sign a little while ago. Jesus had fed them literally. Just like Jesus is always generous and, 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 and kind and loving. He never turns away anybody with their needs unattended. God, through Jesus, his son, God had done a sign. Fed the hungry. More than 5,000 only men were counted. And we know that the women are always the majority and the children and the young people and they were not part of that number 5,000 that is reported in the Bible. And now, what do people get from that? When God bless you with a material gift, a financial prosperity, when God places in your hands and your possession material goods, what does that tell you about God? And what does that do to your life? Many people are not in this church today because they have been blessed by God materially and financially. And so they are so busy looking after uh, 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 you know, their, their, their goodies that God has given them. They have no single hour to come back to this same God and say thank you in the entire week. It's less than two hours. I've just come and said, Lord, thank you. Thank you, you kept me alive this ending week. Thank you. Thank you, I know you're going to keep me going. Thank you. Just about two hours in the entire week. They have no time. It's not because of COVID necessarily. No, 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 no. Who is guilty for that sin? It's God himself. Why? Because it's God who blessed us. And so we have reason not to recognize him because God has blessed us really. The Bible tells us that there were people who were blessed by God. They were healed by God's son. And, and now nine people were healed. Nine people found God's favor. Nine people are now well in life. They are doing better in life now. They have been promoted. They, they, have, they had uh, their share of God's blessing. Where are those nine? They are all gone. Except for one who remembered. Oh, let me go back and say thank you. And one comes back and says, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for what you have done. Whoa. You see, there is a message today. There's a word today. The word is, are you smart? Yes, you come to church, but are you smart? Yes, we can see you're grown. You're a grown man. You're a grown woman. Are you smart? Yes, you finished uh, uh, pre-K. You finished uh, middle school. And, and some are going to high school. And others are, are doing well in college. And others are awake on their dissertations for PhD. They are certainly smart. But are you smart? You are listening to the voice uh, of Pastor Kisiko, uh, you know, asking you this question. Whether you are on Facebook, maybe you are listening on the phone, with all the blessings that God has placed in your hand, I am asking you a question. Are you smart? Because there is a redefinition of who is smart today. Based on these two scriptures of the Old and the New Testament, the First and Second Testament, however you want to put it, they all agree. They all point to the same thing. The smart human being on this world, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in America, North America, Central America, South America, whether you are anywhere in the States, whether you are outside of America, in Europe, Asia, wherever you are, you are not smart, my friend, with all the goodies you have, with all the power you control, with all the influence you have. You are not smart until such a moment when you will realize that God has made you. And God allows and enables you to breathe, to see another day, to live long enough to enjoy the labor of your work, to know 
that the God who brought us here has the power to do anything he places. And to be able to, to spare a moment of your life, to just say thank you to God. We are not to take God for granted. Let us be smart and recognize God. The people are following God for the wrong reason for the most part. Even us on this day. We have become Christians for wrong motivations, wrong expectations. We want God to order to make us rich. We want God in order to keep us healthy. We want God in order to heal our wounds. Well, God specializes in those areas, doesn't he? <laughs> but that's not the reason why. God is a miracle worker. God wants something very special from you and from me, my friends. The business of you and me and God is not just about exchange of financial opportunities, material opportunities, jobs, positions, promotions, and doing well on this life. Where are you going to end up with all of that that you are accumulating? Are you going to take any of that with you? None whatsoever. The Bible tells us that we came on this world carrying what in our hands? Say it like the young people say it. Carrying what? Don't say nothing. Say like the young people say. Carrying what in their hands? Nuh-uh. -uh. <laughs> carrying nothing on our hands. We were holding nothing in our hands. We were just as empty. No wedding rings because we had no wives or husbands or whatsoever. Nothing. We were empty. God brings us empty to a new college, to a new school of living life in this world. God wants us to graduate with success. To graduate with success means that we keep that relationship. The God that brought us here, we want hold on. We want to keep holding on to that God. The relationship with God is the only thing that matters. It's not about exchange of health versus sickness, of money, or, or, or jobs versus unemployment. It's not about that. Those are just signs. If God is doing those signs in your life, blessing you with people that care and love you, blessing your family that truly makes you proud to say, I have family, friends that you can count on when you need them. We have false friends. I'm talking of friends who can be there for you when you need friends. If God has blessed you for all of that. And today you still find yourself alive in spite of every competing challenge that is fighting to bring you down. You are still standing. Maybe you are lying on the bed, not knowing what's going to happen the next hour. Not knowing what the doctors are going to say this time. It doesn't matter if you are still briefing. Know that God is with you. Amen. Because nobody can breathe unless God enables them to breathe. St. Mark's United Methodist Church. Beautiful church. I love this church. Oh my God. I thank God every day for this church. I'm so glad God sent me here. To minister to you. Oh Lord. <laughs> you are awesome people. I love you. And you dance good too. And, and you do everything right. You are, you are people of God. You are truly blessed people of God. But I still got to ask you the question. Are we smart St. Mark's? Do we put God first in our lives? Do we do what we do for strengthened relationship with God? Or do we create small islands in the same church, those who are from here and those who are from there, and then, and then stand against each other, spread uh, 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 what should not be spread around, and just cause confusion and division. Are we smart, St. Mark? Let us be smart, because our God who is calling us, he expects us to be smart by growing in our faith, and in our relationship with God. Strengthening that relationship with God. Holding on to the bread of life that is Jesus Christ himself.
Jesus Christ given to us to give us life. The bread of life. In the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let somebody shout. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray, my friends. Let us pray. Lord, forgive us. And thank you for forgiving us. We are human beings, Lord, and we are always weak. We always fail your test. Just save us. Just keep on loving us. Just keep on caring for us, God. Not because we ask. That's what you do. That's who you are. You are a loving God. You don't love us because we're always perfect and right and we always do the right thing. You love us because we are yours. And nothing and nobody is going to separate us from your love. So bless your people this day. Uh, bless those uh, who are longing for a healing touch. Uh, bless those uh, who are just asking simply to be well and to be in peace and to feel free from stress and depression. Bless those, oh Father, who are truly seeking to know you and to build and strengthen a relationship with you. Bless all of us because all of us are in need of all of those things. Lord, continue to speak to our hearts throughout the week and throughout the month ahead and all the days of our life. Let us not go astray from your ways for we need you, the bread of life and the water of life. In the name of God, who is father, mother, brother and sister, in the name of God's son, Jesus the Christ, in the name of God, who is Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God will take care of you. Let us rise as we are able to. The United Methodist hymn number is 130. Let us rise and sing aloud and together.
hear those words? Did you hear those words? God always keeps God's promises. God will take care of you. God will take care of us. Let us receive the benediction. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for being there and for also being here with us. Thank you for caring. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. You know everything, and you are behind us. You are in front of us. You are on our sides. You are in the midst, but you're also all the way above, watching over us to care for us. Thank you. May the grace of God Almighty, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, powerful fellowship, and the presence of the Holy Ghost be with us always to do just that, to take care of us today and all the days of our living on this earth. And even after our days on this earth. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. Oh God, our protector, God, the one who sustains us, who covers us, who watches over us every day of our lives. We give you thanks for Pastor Kasiko, for the ministry, for all of the work he has done in uplifting our community. And so now, God, we bring him to you. We ask that you would just cover him under your precious blood, be with him and his family as he takes time for respite, time for self-care, time to recharge so that he can continue to do the work that you have called him and all of us to do. God, watch over him, allow him to enjoy this time of vacation, be with his family, keep all of them safe, keep all of us, this community safe, everyone else who is traveling in the coming days and weeks for various reasons, oh God. We give you all of the thanks and praise for keeping this community of faith together. Continue to strengthen the bonds of fellowship. Continue to keep us covered under your precious blood. God, we lay all of our burdens down to you now. We thank you and we praise you in advance for everything that you're going to do in our lives. Thank you again for our pastor. We pray that you would just keep him safe during this time of travel. All of these concerns and all other concerns that haven't been verbalized. We know, God, that you have already given us the victory through your son, Jesus Christ. So we thank you, God, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for the prayer. And now, uh, after the, after the, the uh, after this postlude song, we will be free to leave the sanctuary, but we never leave the presence of God, do we? Amen. Amen. Post Lude song. Oh God, once again, we come into your presence with expectancy in our hearts. God, we know you're going to bless us. So we lift our hands in the sanctuary and we give you glory and honor. 